But there is a two-time champion now in Zhang Wei Li, who I think we have to argue, man. I don't, I don't see this title changing hands, I mean, in the near future, unless a good old pal of hers, Rose Nami Yunus, comes, creeps up again and says, you know what, I think I want my title back, bro. You said it in the intro, man. Wei Li, explosive. Wrestling was phenomenal. But the real thing here, man, is that for Wei Li... Her decision could have backfired in terms of her game plan, man. When she decided she wanted to play jujitsu, not wrestling, but jujitsu with Carla Esparza, I was concerned. End of the first round, Carla Esparza is on top of Wei Li because of the reversal and starts pounding down some ground and pound. Um, how concerned were you? How concerned, Derek? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, very Well, I guess on my end, not concerned because I was betting on Carla Esparza. So I was very excited that she was able to flip it around, get on top, control the position. And I thought that was going to be the remainder of the fight going into it, man. I thought this was once I saw because Wei Lee was looking good and explosive, very, very dangerous fighter. You saw the biceps popping, bro. She was looking good, hitting hard. And once the the kind of the momentum shift at the end of that first round, I was feeling very excited, man. I was excited to see what was going on. Thought that was going to be the mental, you know, capacity or the mental game plan that Carlos Spars is going to implement. Turns out not, man. Uh, one minute into the second round, Wei Li. The strength of Wei Li is kind of just something I don't really see very uh, – we see it every now and then from the women's division. But I feel like Wei Li, every single fight she has, gets stronger in multiple different areas of her own fight game. Very impressive for her, man. How uh, how concerned were you when you saw Wei Li or when you saw Carlos Sparza flip it around on her and then around one? I was very concerned because I was like, what is this game plan? I was like, this is the there's one area Carlos Sparza could beat you and you're voluntarily going there. Why are we doing this? However, um, when I saw her attack it in the second round, I was like, oh, she's confident. Her cardio is ready to go. Like, she's ready to fight, right? And the thing that really made it worthwhile is that she was picking Sparza apart. I mean, on the feet, man. You look at the total strikes. Uh, total strikes, 42 to 19 in favor of Wei Li. Significant strikes, 37 to 6. Uh, no takedowns for Wei Li. Technically a takedown, one of four on her shots for Sparza. But yeah, Esparza just had nothing on the feet for Wei Li. Wei Li too explosive. And remember what I said in my prediction. I said if there was going to be a TKO, it wasn't going to be a flat lining uh, Wei Li over Esparza. If anything, it was going to be too athletic. I'm putting too much on you and you're not able to keep up with me. I feel like that happened in a submission version. The reason why I say that, AJ, is because if you think about it, you went to a world-class wrestler. You basically took her back to a degree. You put her in a crucifix and you rear naked choked her from the crucifix position. Um, let's just say this is another one of those ego punch that that's that hurts your spirit and your soul because they did what you're best at and they beat you at it. That's not good, bro. That's not good. The worst part on top of this, I think that for Israel Adesanya. He at least went to the press conference after, right? And he, and he handled it like a champion, like a true one. He, he explained it all. He said, I agree with the stoppage. My ego, you know, I wanted to go more. But, yeah, he won. As far as a no media um, after the fight. Now, I'm not saying you're obligated to, but I think that in, or, in honor of the, the little bit of trash talk of I want to keep this belt in the USA, I'm going to do everything in my power, at least come and just own up and be like, hey, man, at least I'm a two-time champ or whatever. What did you make of the non-appearance of the media? It, it's not a good look, man. Champion, yeah, if you're a champion and you want to be a champion again, especially what, what worried me a little bit, and I, I should have brought this up in the pre-show, but I forgot until now, was she was already kind of resting on her laurels in the – I was watching the Embedded, and she was saying, well, I was the first champ ever. I'm the champ now. You know, it's, I've already made history. It kind of worried me a little bit, and I think because of that little bit of ego, that little bit of pride, that little bit of, like, self-indulgence, if you will – um, kind of was was what hurt her the most and made it not made her not want to go over to the press conference. I mean, it, it, it is it's sad to see because like Izzy and like you said, Derek, you need to be a champion when you win and when you lose. It's really more of a mindset than it is an actual belt or a tangible object that you have. Um, it does not a good look for Carlos Spars, unfortunately, man. It, it, you know, you really want you you want to go out there and, and realize the people that you look up to or the people that you know your kids look up to that they're watching on TV go through this hard stuff. That they're a good person outside after as well, and they're they're taking the lumps when they have to take the lumps. Just like on this segment when we're we're putting that we got zero and five on the pop bet, 
you got to accept those lumps yeah. when you take or when you give them. You got to accept the lumps when you take them. It's yeah. how it goes. You want to see more out of Carlos Esparza, unfortunately. Absolutely. And I'm going to just say this, man. I, I don't. Oh, sorry. Let me put this back. There we go. I don't think anybody questions um, a Carla Esparza and her character, man. I think she is probably one of the more phenomenal people outside of the cage as she is inside of the cage. I just do think that this was a missed opportunity in terms of cementing your championship status um, in the history books. Not that you're a current champion anymore, but that you held the championship and you did the right thing when you had it. Um, you know, like I said, this is just be the be the the example you want your kids to see and all that. And then, but then again, we take a step back and then we we'll be like, this is MMA and this is face punching. So who gives a shit, right? So either way, Zhang Wei Li, she is the new champion, two time champion, looking dominant. My last question before we move on. <clears throat> Let's say we match make Amanda Lemos versus Zhang Wei Li. That's the new uh, the new title fight. Let's just say, right? Who wins that fight? Zhang Wei Li. I think Zhang's got Why it done. Why are you so confident, given that Lemos has that one hitter quitter on her? Uh, because Lemos has that one hitter quitter, and she mm -hmm. has that full power going forward. Mm -hmm. Wei Li's got also that one hitter quitter, but has a little bit more in the repertoire, if you will, a little bit more experience, a little so. bit more, you know, uh, stuff to offer. Whereas Lemos coming forward, man, Lemos is bringing that heat. And yeah. uh, Wei Lee cracks you on one, steps to the side and cracks you on one. I think Lemos goes down. What do you yeah, got? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll say early prediction in case this fight does get matched up. I, I will side with Wei Lee, but I think this will absolutely be a firefight. And I don't think it'll be as simple as first round, second round, someone goes out. I think this could be a five round affair, a war. Mix it up for Wei Lee, but let's not forget, Lemos could take you down too. Take your back too. You know what I'm saying? And new. Oh, my God. Madison Square Garden. Come on. The titles love to change hands. All right, brother.